Right, so uh, welcome to morning worship. Today is uh, the, the fourth Sunday in the Trinity series, um, Sunday after uh, Trinity Sunday, uh, and it is the 5th of July 2020. Um, some churches are now uh, open for services, um, subject to all sorts of restrictions and, and social distancing and all the rest. Just to explain what we're doing, uh, we did have um, a small and quiet service at St Cross this morning, quarter past nine. Um, didn't publicise it because we wanted just a sort of trial run with, uh, with a few people there. Um, it seems to have gone well to me. Um, we'll need to have a talk with the church wardens during the week to see whether we feel able to do something like that again. Um, so Matthews isn't yet ready to be open for services because um, at the start, just before the start of the lockdown, we began some refurbishment work. And um, once, the, once the lockdown started, uh, our workers were then furloughed, which means that the, that work has been delayed. So that will take a little bit more time before we're ready to reopen our doors. Uh, in the meantime, and um, for some time to come probably, we are uh, live on Facebook and the videos will go up on YouTube for people who want to join us um, from the comfort of uh, your own uh, home or wherever you happen to be, whoever you are uh, bubbling with or isolating with. So hopefully uh, on your screen you can now see the first slide, the first screen which says morning worship. Uh, this is what the Church of England calls a service of the word and uh, as I mentioned it's the fourth Sunday in the Trinity season and uh, today is Sunday the 5th of July and uh, we're going to hand over to uh, Catherine and Isabel for our opening hymn. So we've got Catherine on piano uh, I assume there's trumpet in this as well. Yes, Isabel looks like she's getting in position to to uh, play the tune for us. So our opening hymn reminds us of God's presence with us uh, and invites us to be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. Do please join in. Thank you. Now Richard and Sue are going to lead us in the introduction to our worship. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now 
and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, speak to us. That we may hear your word. Move among us. That we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers. That we may learn to trust you. Amen. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden to ask for his forgiveness and peace. We keep a moment of silence. Prayer of Confession. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May God our Father forgive you your sins and bring you to the eternal joy of his kingdom, where dust and ashes have no dominion. Amen. We'll come now to uh, our Bible readings. Um, there are two readings today and they'll be shared out between a number of voices from the people uh, that you've seen on screen. Um, in between the two readings we're going to have a song, uh, we're going to sing um, uh, today at St Cross would have been all age worship. One of the all age worship songs, one of the songs that we, we, we often sing when there are children present is uh, Our God is a Great Big God. So we'll do that between the readings. But we start with a reading from Romans. Romans chapter 7 verses 15 to 25. I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want. But the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. But I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law. At war with the law of the mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh I am a slave to the law of sin. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lovely, thank you. Thank you to Linda and Carol. Uh, one of the things we don't know um, is whether anybody is watching with children. I can see um, various people are saying hello on Facebook. So Liz, Jean and Alan and Rose. Um, Alan Hibbert and Rose Jewell. Um, but uh, <laughs> we're going to do, um, ah, do not. That's nice. I can see Isabel and I can see Emily. So that's um, that's cheer me up no end. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Right. We're going to do Our God is a Great Big God. Um, there are actions, as, as of course there are. So um, I, I, I don't know any actions because I play the play the guitar or the uke during these. So during Our God is a Great Big God, do you do anything during that? I'm looking at my screen to see if any of uh, what What do we do? Scraper, uh, submarine. You no, no, not that bit. The first bit. The our God is a great big God. What do we do during that bit? Um, a great big God. Ah, oh, that's it. Something like that. So we're measuring out that God is is big, and He holds us in His hands, and He holds us in His hands. 
All right, now once we get to the skyscraper, he's higher than a skyscraper, deeper than a submarine, he's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And he's known me and he's loved me since before the world began. That's the world. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Excellent stuff. Let's see. Right, it goes. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. And he holds us in his hand. We'll do that again. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. It's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams And he's known me and he's loved me since before the world began How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan Our God is a great big God Is a great big God. Abby, who is uh, one of our, our younger uh, church members, Abby is watching. So I'm glad you're there, Abby, along with uh, the other uh, younger ones who are here. Well, I'm exhausted now, um, but uh, thank you for uh, for joining with me in that. Joining we, me, uh, whatever I said then. Uh, and we go on to um, our gospel reading, uh, which is from uh, Matthew's gospel. And Stephen's going to start. Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 to 19 and 25 to 30. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. But John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. Apologies, I was muted. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father. Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all that all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Ah, oh, it was going so well. I forgot to unmute myself. Um, and uh, there we go. So good morning to Yvette, who's joining us from Orlando. Um, and uh, hopefully you've got some others, uh, family members with you there as well. Uh, no idea what time of the morning it is in Orlando. You're up very early on the day after um, uh, Independence Day. Um, so welcome to everybody who is joining us uh, in this country and beyond. Uh, and we go on with uh, our sermon. So if I could have the first of my pictures. How are you? Um, in normal times, that's a question we ask without really expecting an answer uh, or without expecting a real answer anyway. So I ask, how are you? And your reply is, fine, thanks. How are you? Um, and then I say, I'm fine, thanks. And we've done it. That's it. It's, it's more of a ritual than a, a proper conversation. But that's what happens in normal times. Uh, and we're not in normal times. We have passed 100 days of lockdown and the hashtag 100 days of lockdown is trending on social media. And I think that that question, how are you, has taken on a new significance. I think it, it has I would say, a new resonance. How are you? Uh, we're out, we go out for our daily walk and we see someone we haven't seen for weeks or perhaps even months. And we ask, so how are you? Uh, the question just sounds different. Uh, and the, the answer may take longer than uh, it did in normal times. Uh, fine, thanks, how are you? Probably doesn't do. There's more to say. Because uh, we want to know, I mean, have you been ill? Have you managed to stay well? What about those close to you? Have they kept well or are they struggling? Uh, have you lost uh, a friend or a family member during these difficult days? How are you? Again, we might uh, end a conversation by saying, take care. I think I've got us, uh, yes, the next slide. There we go, take care. We might end a conversation or even an email with the words, take care. Uh, and that again, could be just a ritual, um, a, a formula, but it's become something else. It's deeper, it means more. When you, when you tell somebody, I, I want you to take care. In fact, we may have replaced that with stay safe. Who would have thought a year ago that we'd be saying to one another as a routine part of our business, stay safe. So how are you and take care are two phrases that I think have taken on a new meaning. Uh, can we have the next picture, please? That one, yep. The, uh, that's a, a, a picture of a marathon runner. Um, lockdown. 100 days in is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Um, and uh, now you won't know because I never mention it, but I did once complete the London Marathon. It's, it's 20 years ago now. Um, and uh, I wasn't an athlete then and I'm definitely not now. Uh, so it will surprise some of you that I actually just put my mind, decided I was going to do it. I put my mind to it and I did it. I completed the London Marathon. Um, as part of, I, mean, I did all the training, did all the preparation and so on. And as part of my preparation, I actually did the Great North Run uh, which is a half marathon, so that's just 13 miles. And I remember thinking when I finished the Great North Run and got to the end of it, that was all right, I'd managed that. But the idea of turning around and running back to the start again, or jogging in my case, uh, I've never run, but jogging, the idea of jogging back to the start was, was just impossible. I couldn't even have imagined doing it. And then put in the extra preparation and was able to complete uh, a 26 mile course in London. In the picture, we've got a marathon runner just passing the 13 mile marker, the halfway point. One of the problems with lockdown is that we don't know how far through it we are. So where are we? Are we near the end? Are we in the middle, just going past the halfway marker? Or is this something we will return to, perhaps even live with for a long time? Whatever, this is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And I can tell you from personal experience, marathons are exhausting. Uh, the, the London Marathon changed my life and not only in good ways. Um, I've lived with the consequences ever since. Uh, could I have the next slide? What does Jesus say? Jesus says, come to me all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Um, sometimes when I'm preaching on this in normal times, um, I, I've basically read that and said, you don't need a sermon, do you? You don't need to listen to me explain that to you. You just need to hear Jesus say it to you. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, 
and I will give you rest. What else do you need to know? Jesus sometimes talks about the religious leaders of his day whose religion is a burden to others. He says of the religious leaders, you don't lift a finger yourself and yet you place these burdens on other people. That's always the danger with religion and those, uh, and those who hold positions of authority within religion is that they put burdens on people and Jesus criticizes those who do that without lifting a finger themselves. So if the demands of your religion are a burden to you, you didn't get it from Jesus. I'll just say that again. If the demands of your religion are a burden to you, you didn't get it from Jesus. Why do we allow ourselves and others to weigh us down with burdens? When Jesus says, and I'll have the next slide, please. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The weight, the burdens that we are carrying are not the ones that Jesus wants us to carry. That picture there of a, a yoke, the thing that you carry, particularly if you're an ox, uh, carry a weight. Uh, it's, it's comfortable and well-fitting, the one that Jesus has for you. And the weight you're supposed to carry is light. It's within your capabilities. Why on earth then do we add all these other burdens? Why do we allow others to place burdens upon us? Uh, and I think many of us will understand that feeling. But what Jesus says is, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Um, which is not to say that it's all fun and games being a Christian. Following Jesus is not uh, an easy option. Um, Jesus often spends time telling people, you know, this is not the easy route. This is the difficult one, following me. Totally worth it, but it's not easy. Um, can I have my next picture, please? Um, these... <laughs> I, 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 look, I was looking for an image of, uh, of a couple of wrestlers, and this was, this was um, a couple of sumo wrestlers in this picture. I'm not quite sure it uh, depicts exactly what um, I wanted to, to, to show you, but um, <laughs> it's a struggle. Uh, and in his letter to the Romans, which we had as our epistle today, um, Paul, the Apostle St. Paul, tells us it's a struggle being the person that God wants us to be. Uh, and maybe you feel that struggle within yourself, like these two guys uh, wrestling, these um, ancient, uh, it's a, ve uh, a vintage picture of two sumo wrestlers. There's something wrestling inside us. Uh, so Paul uh, acknowledges there's something wrestling inside me between being the person that God wants me to be, knowing that God loves me and wants the very best for me on the one hand, and that's fighting against me, putting myself back at the center of the universe, being in charge of my own life and my own destiny. Those two things within us struggle. Uh, and there is that battle that goes on that St. Paul acknowledges in his letter to the Romans. From Adam and Eve to St. Paul and to us, uh, we, we think we know better. And that's why we struggle rather than allowing God to speak his word of love and joy and peace to us. We're struggling to make our presence felt in the world, whatever it might be. Uh, and so the struggle goes on. And it continues because life is not a sprint, but a marathon. And that's why today, whether your lockdown has been frantically busy or you've been twiddling your thumbs, trying to find stuff to fill your hours, uh, whether you have sailed through and loved it or struggled with your own health and well-being or that of those close to you, uh, you need to hear these words. And let me see the final slide, please. Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Amen. We're going to follow that with uh, our affirmation of faith. You believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? 
and makes Christ known in the world. We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, thank you, uh, David and Catherine. We continue with uh, our prayers. At the end of each section of prayer, there is a response, and uh, the person reading the prayer will read the response on all our behalf. But uh, where, wherever you are, if you'd like to join in with that line at the bottom of the page in dark black type, do please do so. Let us pray. You have called us into the family of those who are the children of God. May our love for our brothers and sisters be strengthened by your grace. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy, hear us. You have called us to be a temple where the Holy Spirit can dwell. Give us clean hands and pure hearts so that our lives will reflect your holiness. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy, hear us. You have called us to be a light to the world, so that those in darkness come to you. May our lives shine as a witness to the saving grace you have given for all. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy, hear us. You have called us to be members of your body, so that when one suffers, all suffer together. We ask for your comfort and healing power to bring hope to those in distress. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy, hear us. You have called us to be the bride, where you, Lord, are the bridegroom. Prepare us for the wedding feast, where we will be united with you forever. We pray especially for the bereaved family and friends of Nikki Holcroft. Jesus, Lord of the Church, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. And we continue with the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us for our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. Uh, in a moment, we're going to sing um, our next hymn, and uh, this follows on from obviously what uh, uh, we were looking at in the gospel reading and the sermon. Um, before we do that, uh, can I just say hello to Elodie, um, who's joined us, and uh, Margaret, and I think I've said, oh, and Cheryl, Cheryl Hughes is there as well. Good morning to you, and to everybody else who's watching. Those are just the names that I can see um, up on there, uh, who've commented on Facebook, and uh, uh, just lovely to welcome all of you to our uh, online worship today. So the hymn, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say, and Catherine and Isabel are going to lead us in that hymn. The words will be on the screen.
thank you, Catherine and Isabel. Um, and uh, let me just say thank you to everybody else, Sally and Stephen, Linda, David, Richard, Sue, Carol and Jenny, and uh, everyone who has joined us. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, notices. Um, the, uh, you will have seen that um, uh, government ha has said that church places of worship can be open um, from yesterday was the official opening start, along with uh, pubs and restaurants. Um, churches can now open, but it will be up to each church um, to decide when and how it's ready to open safely. Um, so St Cross was open this morning at 9.15. Now, uh, we may be doing that again next week, but I don't know, because obviously we'll need to give that some thought to see how it went this morning. Um, and there will be very limited numbers that we can, because St Cross obviously a very small building, so um, if uh, half the village turns up, we'd love to see you but uh, we will um, have to, to keep an eye on the numbers, so we'll see how that goes. Um, so Matthews, as I've already mentioned, we're not able to open yet because uh, there's been building, uh, the refurbishment work going on inside the building, and uh, so we're not ready. Um, the, 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 the work itself has been delayed because of uh, the uh, coronavirus restrictions, so we're not yet ready uh, to open to the public, but uh, we'll let you know when that is happening. So um, in the week, we've got uh, Linda's reflection on Wednesday evening at 7.30. Uh, Friday afternoon, praise and play. So uh, I mentioned some of our praise and play friends who've joined us this morning. Hopefully you'll join us for more singing on Friday afternoon at two o'clock. And then next Sunday, we'll be back here for morning worship at 10.30. Um, again, what I've forgotten to put on the, the notices is um, this evening, um, I will lead a service of evening prayer on Facebook. Um, on the first Sunday of the month, we would have um, evening prayer from the Book of Common Prayer at St. Matthew's. So I'm going to do that as a, as a live stream on Facebook at 6.30, um, if any of you are able to join me for that. Thank you. And so we draw to a close. We pray for God's blessing for ourselves and for one another. We pray for our families, our friends and our neighbours. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So thank you very much uh, for being there this morning and uh, we look forward to catching up with you uh, in real life in some form or other before too much longer. And back here um, on, uh, on Facebook for uh, Wednesday Reflection, Friday Praise and Play, and next Sunday, um, our morning service. Uh, thank you very much and uh, uh, bless you.